buddy. Do not much. Trying to live life. Oh, man. I fucking know. So good to see you. Dude, I know. It's been a it long really, time. It really is. I was thinking about this um, since we scheduled it. Like I said before, you know, off camera, I was saying, you know, I've kind of been slacking, I feel like, with the podcasting. I haven't been, like, connecting with people or having these conversations. And I, I was so used to, um, like, uh, you and I having conversations out at St. Charles MMA. Like, every, you'd be in, and I, we'd be, like, crossing paths, and we'd sit there, and we'd talk for 5, 10, 15 minutes. The good heart-to-heart. -heart. That's, that's all you need sometimes. Yeah, dude. We would always have those conversations. So I was like, man, I'm excited to talk to fucking Zach, man. It's been a minute, dude. Yeah, I'm so happy you reached out to me. Mm -hmm. I was like, oh, dude, podcast? Hell yeah. Yeah, no, dude. You've been grinding, man. I've been trying. You've been it's been uh, it's been a wild, wild ride for sure. I know. I think last time we spoke, you were um, you were kind of transitioning your business model to uh, more group classes, trying to help kind of just be more efficient with your time because you just had your daughter. And, uh, dude, now we're in this nice ass facility dude <laughs> it's, it's crazy <laughs> isn't that wild it's so about, crazy bro? i honestly can't even believe it you know yeah. like it's i guess i started training in 2009 so it took me 11 years to actually like fulfill like this dream that i've had for so long yeah. and here i am inside my own gym talking to you which is crazy right because we were just talking about redeveloping my programs and being more time efficient mm -hmm. so i designed those 12-week challenge programs and did those for about a good year yeah and then I guess the time was coming to where um, I don't want to feel like I, I don't know how to put it, uh, outstayed my welcome at St. Charles MMA, but I was just like, my wife was pregnant with our second child, yeah. and I didn't know what was going to happen, Yeah. and business wasn't good, I had to admit, like in St. Charles it wasn't good, there's gyms everywhere, and it's saturated all over the place, and so I just started looking at a whole bunch of places yeah and i looked actually behind st charles mma there was uh like 2800 square foot available and i literally almost went on that on that little road there yeah i looked at some places over there too it's literally right behind st charles mma and they had a big old garage door i think it's a car in the same building or in a different building right behind mike's building okay i know what building you're talking about there huge beautiful space mm -hmm. so you make a right on sharir it's like right there yeah i think there's a car salesman place there now okay it was a cleaning place they were only in business probably three or four months and then i saw another one there and i was like i'm so glad i didn't get that lease because the broker that was wanting me to like look at the lease literally gave me the lease and they wanted me to make a decision within like two hours of receiving oh, it oh fuck those guys and i like called my brother and i was like because my brother owns a chiropractic clinic in alaska and i was like mm -hmm. dude can you just kind of look over this with me man i was like i am not understanding any of this crazy lingo i haven't really looked at any type of leases and i'm not even sure like about this guy and my brother's like fuck this dude this yeah. dude's trying to fuck you over so hardcore and really I just messaged him back and told him that it wasn't good for me. And then straight from there, I was talking to Jessica, my wife, and was like, is is this the right time to do something like that? And she looked at me and was like, if you don't do it now, you're never going to do it. Yeah. She's like, I'm pregnant with our second child. You've been training for like over 10 years. You haven't done it yet. She's like, if you don't fucking do it now, you're never going to fucking do it. And I'm right. like, you're right. So then I just started looking at places everywhere and visited and talked to a whole bunch of people. And then I was like, I looked at multiple places in St. Charles. I looked in Maryland Heights. I looked in Creef Core. I looked kind of just where everywhere there was like warehouse space that I can just go see and see what type of, yeah. what can I see? What kind of, because when I first walked in St. Charles MMA in 2015, I was like, oh, a little thousand square foot room. I could transform this. This is a gold mine. Yeah. It wasn't, you know, and it shaped up to be a nice, awesome place. And man, I owe Mike everything for that because I'm so yeah. thankful. Well, that's like the natural progression, right? It's like you, you just outgrew that situation. Yeah, right? I mean, it's definitely good your wife pushed you because it's never a good fucking time. It's never a good right. time. Dude. And I wouldn't say I was like seeking her approval, but you know those big risks in life that you helps, they're man. they're they're risking everything with you, you know? So yeah. I'm not only risking it, she is too. So it's like, am I going to stay on the back border and her be like, are you going to do this? Or, yeah. So I was just like, Zach, yeah. try it now. You have to try now. And I'm like, okay, yeah. here's the deal. Well, dude, I mean, you, I mean, you guys are teammates, right? It's, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's like you, you definitely want to have like her support, and sometimes you need them to to push you because, yeah, man, that's one of the things that um. So like, I'm divorced, right? And whenever I got divorced, man, I feel like this this may happen to a lot of people, but for me, like it it can completely skew the way you view things. And I was just like, you know what, man, I don't ever want to get married ever fucking again. <laughs> Like, like relationships aren't meant to last. Like, <laughs> I like, man, fuck all this. And then 
it's it's like I've been with my girlfriend Deja now. Um, I guess for like five years now we've been doing this thing, and uh, yeah, man, it's 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 nice to have like a reliable partner there like somebody who's there with you like through the shit someone that you can like talk to and confide in and like just go on this wild fucking ride in so like you, seriously you, you definitely need that support dude. seriously she's been well i mean i started dating her in january of 2009 or i'm sorry june of 2009 january of 2009 is when i got certified as a trainer and started to freelance and go homes to homes and um i said the same thing i was in a long distance relationship for like three years my other girlfriend from high school went to another school and we tried to do the long distance thing it doesn't work well i was like i'm never fucking getting in a long distance relationship again <laughs> and then like the summer me and jess started talking she's like all right i'm going to missouri state and i'm like down in springfield yeah and i was like am i gonna, do this? Am I gonna <laughs> fucking do this long distance right. fucking shit again i was like well i got some good fucking experience dude and i might as well yeah. try it again i really digged her and i liked her and yeah, uh, I trained during the week and pretty much all the money that I made training, I just spend going to visit her like every <laughs> other weekend in Missouri State and kind of just doing like the party thing because I never really experienced like the crazy like party life. So um, it was a good time. She went to Missouri State for uh, two and a half years and then she came back and finished her degree yeah. in Maryville. So she's literally been with me through the thick and thin. And yeah. I honestly wouldn't be where I am in today without her. Yeah. I totally like give yeah. her like so much credit for believing in me, you know, especially when I didn't. And I think the last podcast I told you how I had like almost like a crazy mental breakdown being like, do I even want to train anymore? Do I even want to do this? Like, why is it so fucking hard to fucking want to help other people? Dude. Like it, I'm trying so hard to put myself out there to show people how much love I have for fitness, for just love in general for people. Yep. Like, and you got to go through so many stepping stones and so many loopholes to try to fucking help somebody. Dude. It's like, do you not want to be healthy? Do you not want to feel good? It's like people just – for whatever reason, like it's so hard in this industry and in the Midwest because everybody in the Midwest they're just all typical know it alls. You know, not was, in a bad way, yeah. But they're just like, I know, I'll do it when I want to. You know. Well, at the end of the day, most people know how to be healthy. Almost yeah. all of us know what to do. You know what I mean? Like when it comes to mechanics and different things and programming, obviously it gets more complicated. But in general, mm -hmm. most people know how to be healthy. Yeah, drink water, eat some fruits and vegetables. Move your body. Go for a 30-minute walk a day. Get some sleep. You're good. Simple shit, right? But people don't do it, right? That's mm -hmm. why we have professionals, right? Like we need the accountability. We need the push. But um, I was talking to uh, Zach Shear, and um, he's from here in the Midwest, and he lives out in L.A. now, and I think he does some training out there a little bit. Um, but he was talking about just how much easier it is to train people out there because they're just more health conscious. And maybe some of it is maybe some of the, the vanity of just Hollywood. People want to look good. There's a lot of beautiful people out there, but here in the Midwest, man, people don't value health the same. It's always no. like, I remember growing up, dude, do you remember like when you were a kid seeing anybody in their like forties, fifties, sixties that like look really young and in shape my friend's dad did because he did construction his whole life so he was jacked when yeah. i was a kid even till now he still looks real lean he has yeah. his own concrete business but other than that there's not a lot of people that i can think of but not but many. he lived like that fitness yeah he didn't even work out but he did construction and laid concrete his whole life and was healthy and was just jacked his whole life just yeah. leaned out looked yeah. like a, almost like a fighter body but he's not the norm right no so many people around here, dude, it's just like they just don't care. I, I talk to people, man, and they're like, well, I'm just going to die at 65 or so. And it's like, what? Like you're just accepting that or you're just saying like you're old and you're just you just, you just accepted it. You're yeah. old and you're done. And it's like, what? It's, it's really weird how people do that, dude. Because, I mean, fuck, like your health is really – it's like the key to everything, really. I mean, if you want to accomplish anything in life, you got to take care of your body. Seriously. Yeah, it's tough. So I, my, I yeah. My father just retired. He's yeah. 70. And I'm like, dude, dad, I teach a senior class now. Wednesdays at 1 p.m. Yeah. You're fucking there. Like, you're coming every Wednesday. I don't care what you do. Like, you're just going to be there. You don't got to pay. <laughs> <laughs> well, not only that, you know, but it's just like, what are you going to do? Sit on the couch and... Watch TV all day, go for your two-mile walk, have a few drinks at night, go to bed. It's like, dude, now that you're retired, it's time to live. Like, yes. you've devoted your whole life to somebody else. Now you got to devote your life to you. Yeah. And dude. so, like, someone doesn't – like, he hasn't been told that stuff. He's the father figure. He's, like – he's raised seven boys, you know? Yeah. He's, like, our fucking hero. But sometimes heroes need to be told, hey, man, 
you need to live your life. You need to get out there and have some fun. Yeah. Well, so. We're all human. That's, isn't that the weird thing? Did you, was there a point where you realized like your, your, your parents were just people? When I was an adult. Right. That's what I'm saying. But I respect them way more as an adult than I did as a child from like, obviously being a father of two now. And then just seeing, and I have six brothers, so like my father never missed sports games for us. He was around all weekend, like picked us up from high school, took us everywhere, traveled to our soccer traveling teams, all this other crazy crap. And you know they were just there for us, no matter what it, no matter what it took, they were they were there for us. And yeah. I wouldn't say I got everything that I wanted, but I fucking for sure got everything that I needed. Yeah. So and I, like my I like growing up, I guess my biggest sports fan is LeBron James. Okay. All my friends like make fun of me about it and shit like that, but. You know, since He's I was in high school, I, I watched athlete. I watched him through his high school career, and obviously he didn't go to college. But I've been watching him since he began in the NBA. And uh, if you look at his background. He's just like a really good dad. He's a really good person. He, yeah, you know he's people like to hate on him because he's like a winner and he's so yeah. successful. But he, the dude has navigated the most treacherous waters and has done really well. He's he's fucking helps the community like crazy. He has no fucking scandals out there. He takes care of his kids. He's like a family guy. He's an yeah. entrepreneur. He's yes. a, he's a fucking athlete. He's doing everything right, but people just want to hate that guy. Of course, everyone People don't like them. winners, dude. Yeah, dude. They, yeah, for real. <laughs> people love to hate on winners. I love them. I don't care who it is. LeBron James, fucking Tom Brady, fucking Lance Armstrong. I like fucking winners. Hate them if you want to. I fucking love them. Oh, I agree. They're hardcore athletes. They vote their whole life to their trade, and they want to help other people along the way. Yeah. So I guess back to what I was saying is, like, growing up, I never really had, like, any athletes that I really, like, looked up to. The athletes I honestly looked up to were, like, my older brothers because I just wanted to be like them all the time. And by the time I was, like, 16 years old, I can pretty much – beat all my brothers and my cousins at pretty much any sport that we played oh really so i would just cons yeah i was just way more athletic than book smart and i can make a game out of anything i never played video games growing up or anything. i never was into video games if i go to friend's house i ended up watching my friends play video games and me go and do something like active so i never really had a hero growing up and i would i would say that my father was definitely my hero growing up okay like he was just there for everything yeah you know he was a very strict parent and uh this is a funny story we would get in so much fucking trouble with my little brothers and shit. My mom would look at us and be like, your dad's beating your ass when he gets home. And it'd be like 1 o'clock in the afternoon. And we're like, oh, my God. We're literally going to get our ass beat when Just we get anxiety home. anxiety for the rest of the day. Yeah. This is probably – my dad was telling us this, this a few years ago. He's like – Man, your mom would call me, and then I would just have anxiety the rest of the day because <laughs> <laughs> I know the first thing I had to do when I come through that door because you guys were just being so bad as I had to put my briefcase down. He'd literally sit down on the chair and he'd just go over and be like, and we'd like, <laughs> he'd literally just go and like bend over my dad's and we'd just hold our hands on our ass and he'd be like, move your hands, smack, smack, move your hands, smack, smack. Next person, come, boom, boom, move your hands, yeah, so boom, funny. boom. Yeah. And then like right when he's done, he's like, all right, guys, we'll see you in dinner in like five minutes. Yeah. And it was just like that. And we were just like so like frightened of it. But it's just like, dude, we just we were just disciplined in a different way. And I think that taught us so much. And a few years ago, he was like, man, I hate it. He didn't want to do that. No way. That yeah. was like the last. My dad is like the most sensitive, loving guy you would ever meet in your whole life. Yeah. But for but he has a quick wick. And I think that's where I probably get my quick wick from. But uh, shit like that is just really funny. That is funny because like you don't like – it's so hard to see, especially as a kid, to see like outside of your own situation to like for sure to know that your dad was like fuck. He's like, cause I can think about that with my kids, dude. Like, there was a summer where my daughter went to this. Um, it wasn't her normal daycare, like for summer, and um, so she went to the summer camp, and she was just always having issues. And like they would call me, and I'm just like fuck. Like, why can't you just? not get in trouble here like f i don't want to deal with this shit like parents don't want to deal with no, that shit don't. at all dude like it doesn't feel good to deal with it but it's like you know you have to because if you let it slip it's a slippery slope and then before you know it dude like it can just be way worse the kids will start trying to because kids are always trying to test those boundaries oh yeah yeah oh, man. yeah yeah i remember like i realized that my parents were just people Again, as an adult, like you have to have that perspective. But I think what really set it in was like more for like my grandma when I realized like, oh, my grandma is just a person. Like she's not because you always want to think like your grandparents are just like the most like innocent, sweetest people in the world. And like, oh, I love my my like rest her soul. Like she passed away. Like she was an amazing person, but she was still just a person. And she for had sure. her flaws. And like we're all just fucking human, dude. We're all just human. That was a big, like big realization I think as an adult for me. For sure. Yeah. Yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Yeah. 
I mean, well, I, we're all just people, man. Yeah, for sure. And you think you're, I think growing up, my parents were superheroes. Like, I have no idea how they even did it. Yeah. I don't know how they raised seven boys, sent us all through Catholic schools, not having huge salaries, living in a mediocre town and doing it, you know? They, they yeah. Like, they did it. And we're all healthy and we're all adults and we're all trying to, like, live life. And yeah. I don't think they could be any more prouder of how not we turned out. Were they just, like, super disciplined with, like, because obviously they probably spent a fuck ton of money between school and sports and all these things. Like, were they just, like, super, like, frugal in, like, a lot of areas except, like, when it came to you kids? Or? Mm, I mean, they were... When it came to us, they were just like were really they like, particular. Maybe like were they just like super disciplined people? You know, with my older brothers, I'd say they were. But, you know, at the time, like we were 13, 14, 15, it's like if, I, if I, me specifically, if it was like if I had homework that wasn't done, they wouldn't be like, you're sitting at the table and getting your homework done. Yeah. They weren't like those type of people. But if it was like – there, I would call my parents more old school. It's like you get home from school, you get a little snack. This is like grade school through high school type shit. Yeah. And then – you just do whatever you want, but don't be in the house. Go outside and play and do your thing. But if you're not at the dinner table with your hands washed, with your hat off at 6 p.m., you're in fucking trouble. Oh, yeah. So it's like home-cooked meal every Tight night. Yeah. yeah, yeah. You wake up. So they didn't, like, waste money on, like, going out to eat all the time. Never. We never, ever, ever went out to eat. Yeah. Maybe once a month my mom or dad would bring over some hamburgers from, like, Burger King or right, something. Right. But other than that, it was, like, home-cooked meals every night. Sunday morning, biscuits, gravy, eggs, toast. Friends would beg my parents and us, be like, dude, can can we spend the night at Costello's house tonight? You know, Dan, uh, Mr. Costello is going to make us famous breakfast. And dude, there's like three or four of my friends, not kidding you, from like second all the way through high school. I mean, we'd get drunk in high school and we would wake up on Sunday morning and and then my friends would be like, all right, Dan, got to go. Be like, whoa, if you eat breakfast uh, here on Sunday, then that means you got to go to church. (laughs) Yeah, you're here with us. Yeah, so it'd be like, well, we'd go to church. Friends would bounce out, but. That was a thing for years. That's my funny. dad made my, I can't even like, he does it every once in a while now, but for a good, probably first 18 years of my life, every Sunday morning. And then every Sunday night now, our whole family goes to my mom and dad's house. It's like family. Oh, really? Still, yeah. Nice. That's the one thing I want my kids to like remember for the rest of their life is like me making them breakfast. Like I've always made them breakfast. That's like, awesome. Their whole life. And they will remember that because it's like one of the biggest staples that I remember of and Friends that haven't come in for years and years, and they see my dad like, dude, Dan, I remember your Sunday breakfast. This, and my dad made bacon gravy. It wasn't sausage gravy. It was oh. strictly bacon gravy. And I couldn't even eat sausage gravy till I was like 20 years old. Really? Because I was used to the bacon. Oh, yeah. And it was like – it wasn't really thick. It was just like in between like the thin and thick type of uh, texture. So Okay. It was amazing. I can dig it. I can dig it. Yeah, and then now you're on the other side of things, dude. Now you're the parent. And the, yeah. and the kid doesn't even realize, like, you're just a person. <laughs> and I'm the superhero to my kids, you know? Yeah. I want to be really bad, you know? So Yeah. And I think that was cool. I never really looked up to any athletes or actors growing up. But when LeBron James came around, I was just like, this dude's just like a freak. This yeah. dude's a freak. Dude, he was just – he was a grown man <laughs> as a child. You know, I've seen – I don't know if it was, like, a Nike commercial or something, but they showed, like, all these old clips – of like professional athletes when they're in high school, it was like Michael Vick, Brian Urlacher. I don't know who else it was, but it was like just you would see these old clips, and it was just like it was like men amongst boys in their sports. And it's like I was like, you know, that person is for sure going to the league, like you, whatever yeah. league it is. Like yeah. you know, it's gonna happen. It's so weird how that happens. It is weird. It's crazy. Grown ass kid, like kids are just grown ass men, like at seventeen. Yeah, LeBron James was, like, next level, dude. And I'm not even, like, a basketball fan like that, but I definitely appreciate, like, what he does. For sure. I um, So I'm wrapping up 75 hard right now. I've been following you yeah. all the time on your on your uh, <laughs> Facebook post and everything. Like, Dang, this dude is doing it again. Second yeah. time through. Yeah, How man. How is it? Good. Actually, really fucking good. It was actually probably easier this time. Um, There's definitely some really hard days where I was just like, man, like, this is a test day or this is even, like, a test week. Just like, just not fucking feeling it. Um, I decided, like last time, I I took a, a minor break in between seventy five hard and like phase one because the the program in its entirety is like there's like the seventy five piece like program, seventy five hard. Um, there's like that piece of the program which is kind of like the kickstart to this whole like year long program that Andy Frisella created. So it's like seventy five hard and then. Um, phase one, which is 30 days and you can either take a break or go right into it. So I'm going to last, last time I did it, I took a little bit of a break, like not long, but I took like a little bit of a break and it made it kind of difficult. So I'm just going to roll right into it. 
Um, is there anything different with the 30 days? So the phase one, yeah, it's it's all the original 75 hard things, but then you add in um, a five-minute cold shower, um, 10 minutes of visualization, and then Andy has um, what he calls his power list, which is um, it's just like a checklist. So you put five things on there every day um, that's going to progress you towards your goal, whatever that goal could be. It could be um, like, oh, I need to like send out an email to a customer, and I need to like – go for this walk or, you know what I'm saying? Just like whatever it is to your goals. Um, so that's the original power list. And then, so I think the idea is he it's kind of like, you should always be doing that power list. It's kind of like just a daily part of his life. So he added three additional things to the power list. So you have eight power list items that you're supposed to do every day. Daily for 30 days for, after the 75 heart. Right. So you're adding that on to the 75 heart already? So, yeah, so it'll be 105 days straight when it's all said and, and done. And then 30 more days of just way more discipline. Yeah, it's 30 more days. So today is day 74 for me. Tomorrow is day 75. Oh, dude, yeah. that's awesome. We're almost there, man. Um, but, I, like, there's really no end for this time around. Like, last time I was just like, oh, man, I'm ready for these 75 days to be done. Um you gave a lot of really good insight, though, during your 75 days because you'd be on your walks in the morning time. I did. And it'd be raining a lot, and you'd be talking about it yeah. and what you were going through and, like, your mindset. So I definitely was following you and listening yeah. to, like, what you're saying. So you saying that now totally makes sense because, I mean, you could only go th- – I mean, I feel like you could only power through something for so long. And I, I think uh, someone told me a long time ago, I don't know who, but there's there's a huge difference between motivation and being driven. Yeah. Like you can be motivated and so fucking hyped because you go to a motivational speaker and that speaker can just like totally lift your spirits up. Right. But when you're not there and 24 hours later, you're like, eh, <laughs> mm-hmm. you don't really want it. Well, one's based off emotion and feeling, right? And like being driven would – and I would probably replace that word with like just discipline. Like you know what I mean? Because um, like – drive like if you have the drive it will definitely feed into your discipline yes for like, sure you know what i'm saying like or maybe you know i heard somebody say there's a difference between motivation and inspiration like if you're motivated motivating is like motivation is like this fleeting feeling but if you're truly like inspired like it's probably just interchangeable for for being driven right if you're truly inspired it's just like you are going to do that thing because it's like it's like it's like this deeper place within you. Yeah, I'd probably call that drive. Because most th- most times when you're motivated, shit's gonna fucking come up, but you're you're either gonna not do it or you're gonna do it. Right. There's a big brick wall. Are you gonna be driven to drive through it, or are you just gonna like stop, look up, and be like, well, I don't know how to climb that. Right. Yeah. Like and you then you find mo- a fucking yeah. way. And it's like, well, motivation's out the window now because now I don't know how to climb through the brick yeah. wall. You know. Dude, there's been so many days. Dude, honestly, man, and like, you would like to think it's always automatic, but like even. What was it? It was Sunday, dude. I'm like, dude, I might fucking fail today because I was just like just not – just. I was so mentally drained. I was just fatigued and exhausted. I just needed another night of like really good sleep. And I was like, man, fuck, man. Like I don't know if I'm going to make it today. Like so like no day is given by any stretch of the imagination. But, yeah, that first time I did it last year, I was definitely hopping on social a lot more and just like sharing thoughts and insights and different things. And, um, dude, like this time around – I've been a lot more quiet on social. Like, I've been kind of, like, sharing, like, oh, I completed the day. But um, I think, like, so with with the George Floyd shit and this, like, all the fucking chaos online, like, every and then the election's coming up and everybody, it's just, like, poison and chaos. It's so toxic. On social it's media. So right? toxic. And I just, like, dude, I had to get off of Facebook, bro. I'm like, I can't fucking do this. And, like, now I'm hopping on there here and there, like, mostly to promote the podcast whenever I would or just out of addiction and habit. I'll kind of hop. For sure. But not catch myself scrolling, like, get the fuck off of here. Like, I'll I'll look through maybe somebody's comments and I'll remember why, like, I don't want to fucking be on here because it's just, like, 80 comments of people just saying ignorant shit. Yeah. Or just arguing. And yeah. It's just, like, what? It's, like, it's just, it felt so toxic I had to get off there. So I've been, like... Haven't really been posting a whole lot. I, I I'm more active through my stories, which is kind of cool because it's like those aren't permanent. It's like it, it, you don't have to put a lot of thought into them. I don't have to like make a fucking caption and do all this shit. It's just like oh, like here's some funny things or something totally. I'm doing. You know what I mean? So I've been a little bit active through there, but I've just been off of social so much more this time around. And truth be told, dude, so I did 75 hard last year. And then I was going to do um, – I was like, fuck, man. Like, I need I, – I, I did phase one, and then I was – you have to do a 30-day break between phase one and phase two. So you have to take a break of 30 days. And it's up to you what you do in those 30 days. But the the purpose is, like, let's just say you, you go right into phase one 
um, after 75 hard, like I'm going to do this time. Like you already got the momentum, like you have the momentum, but the purpose is like, this isn't a challenge. Like it's a mental toughness program. It's a, it's about like creating new habits and, and developing that discipline. Healthy lifestyle habits. Exactly. Yeah. And um, for the most part, I feel like I carried most of those throughout the year. But, dude, we're all fucking human, dude. Like, of course. I love eating pizza. It's, like, one of my favorite fucking yeah. things, pizza and burgers and shit like that. So you kind of get away from it. And I was like, man, well, let me try to do 75 hard again. Let me do a round two. And, like, I tried it. I failed. Tried it again. Failed. Like, and I was like, man, um, it was coming up to 4th of July. I was like, man, like, I've been drinking a little bit more than I want to. I don't feel my best. Like, I, we're already X amount of months into this fucking lockdown. And I was like, man, I need to have some sort of structure in my fucking life. Like, I just need, like, I felt best whenever I was on 75 hard. So, like, hung out with some friends and shit for, uh, for the 4th of July. We were drinking. And then I woke up July 5th and got right back on the 75 hard. And I just feel my best when I'm on this, right? Like, I just feel mentally sharp. Everything is just is just working well. Like not every day is easy, but it, like even on the days that kind of feel chaotic, at least I'm kind of rooted in this structure. And you kind of get even on the days where you're not the most um, like I'm not the most uh, productive. It's like I still got that win. You know what I mean? For like sure. I'm still doing something. And um, man, so that felt good. But uh, I'm going to do the 75 hard and then I'm going to write into phase one and I'm going to take the 30 days off and then I'm going to go into phase two, which phase two is just another 30 days of 75 hard. Okay. So no additional tasks, just the 75 hard. And then um, there's a phase three, but the way that works is so like once you do the phase two, there's there's nothing until the very last month of the year. So the idea is like day one is 75 hard, then you have 365 days you know, for the year. And um, that last 30 days, that last month before your year anniversary is phase three. So up until the end of phase two, up until that phase three, it's like it's totally on you. Like, did you develop the habits? Are you going to be disciplined? And then uh, phase three is like it's additional 75 hard, the same task. And then I think it's like I'd have to look. But I know I, I remember it was like you have to like talk to a stranger for like five minutes and like a random act of kindness every day. Um, those are the only two that kind of come off the top. I have to look to see what it was, but all in all, man, it's like, <laughs> I could fucking talk a stranger zero. <laughs> yeah, dude, <laughs> that would probably be my hardest thing to be, to be honest, especially like if you're not like going out and about and like trying to just talk to people. Yeah. Yeah. Which I've been trying to do in this, this area. I'm sure you have to. Yeah, you have to. I'm sure you have to, to try to like build your business. Being in a small, uh, yeah. municipality like St. Anne, everybody knows everybody. And there's, I'm the only functional training gym in all of St. Anne. Yeah. They got the edge going in, and there's there's a couple gyms like lined up across the rock road. But in order for people to know about you, because it's kind of hidden behind the, all these, yeah. a lot of people in this area feel like you can target market on social media and mm -hmm. do those boosted posts and stuff. But people from fucking Nigeria and other countries like my posts. It's like, dude, it's supposed to be targeted within like a three-mile radius of my gym, and it's like, definitely well, not. Why are people that don't even live in the United States liking my posts? Yeah, that's weird. So I'm just like, that's super fucked up to me. So um, I call it contacting. Just literally like thinking of the most random thing you can be like, dang, those are some awesome shoes. Where'd you get those shoes from? Yeah, like, compliment people. Yeah, that's pretty much all you're doing is just trying to compliment people, get close to them. Obviously, you got a social distance now. You can't feel weird. You got to have your fucking mask on in St. Louis <laughs> County. So there's just like so many other like hurdles and obstacles you got to get over to like try to meet new people inside of them. So I've been trying to do that when I'm out and about or like I, I just try to run random errands to places where I know people are going to be like a Walgreens or – yeah. Um, you can go into some food places. You're going to pick up your food and stuff. So it's yeah. just like mainly just making eye contact. Yeah. Not being weird. Yeah. And be like, oh, how you doing today? You know, just being friendly. And then sometimes it'd be like, oh, my God, there's actually fucking friendly people in this world. I would love to talk to you right now. Yeah. Yeah. Five minutes. That's kind of that's a stretch. But yeah, but. dude, it's it's an important skill to have, especially as an entrepreneur, dude, like most of your, your customers, you don't fucking know. You're right. Right. Like, I love when the random comes through the door and you're like, oh, how you doing? Thank you for coming in. Welcome to Eyewitness Fitness. Do you have any questions? How'd you hear about us? Right. Right. You hit them with all those questions all off the bat. <laughs> exactly. I'm just so excited. You know, I just opened and I'm just like, I'm like, oh my God. Hey, how'd you hear about us? Did you find me online? Did someone refer you to here? It's like, which question do I answer first, Zach? <laughs> <laughs> Can you shut up and ask me all these fucking questions? Yeah, man. But I'm pretty excited. I didn't do the phase. So I tried the phase 
I did the phase one, and then like I tried to do seventy five hard two more times. So I got through thirty days each time. So I guess like in a technical sense, I did a phase two, but the way it wasn't with the purpose of doing phase two. And I didn't do phase three last year, so I'm pretty excited to do that. Um, I decided I'm not going to drink for a whole year. So like I'm feeling pretty good, like not drinking right now. I just feel like every time I drink, do I feel like shit? Are you a drinker? Uh, I do like to drink. Yeah, every once in a while. So lately, since uh. Why I wake up at 5 a.m. every morning. Now. <laughs> I don't try to. I don't really drink drink during the week at all because I have my girls I take care of, and my wife works week and nights. So when she's gone, I'm with the kids by myself for three nights. So, and during the week, I try not to. But my birthday was yesterday. Oh, it was, oh so, yeah, it was. Happy birthday, bro! <laughs> you did. Damn, 33. Getting old. I know, dude. So we. Uh, <laughs> so Jessica's like, I got a surprise. I'm gonna take the girls to my parents' house. You get done with class early. We're gonna go out. So we went to dinner, and. uh I mean, if I'm, if I honestly, if I'm gonna get drunk, I just like to drink Jack and Sprite. Oh, is that your drink? Okay. That's always been my go-to since I went to Vegas when I was 21. I, I can dig it. Like, oh man, it's so good. I'll sip on a beer here and there and stuff like that. But if I'm just gonna try to get lit up, I'll just drink some Jack and Sprite. <laughs> so I probably had like four or five of those last night. Oh, uh, we you're to the toasty. Bar. Oh, dude. <laughs> we, went to, we went to the bar last. We went to we went to a sports cafe in Bridgeton, and then oh, I was like, man, what, let's go to the casino. The last time I was at the casino was my last fucking birthday. Really? Yeah. Okay. So I was like, all right, let's go, let's Which go. Which casino did you go to? Uh, we went to Ameristar. Okay. Dude, they have, so like in the casino, like upstairs, there's um, like a little cafe. Um, I guess it would be, I don't know, like the south end of the building. I don't know. Yeah, because so, we were upstairs a large portion of the night on one of the slot machines. But yeah. I tried to look, but I went back downstairs. So. But yeah, dude, so it's like, it's in this back corner, and fucking, they have the best breakfast burritos, bro. There's been many a 1 a.m. I've been in there drunk. Well, I, I'm, gonna, <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna do that for sure, because I was hungry when I left last night. Dude, the best breakfast burritos. So next year when you go. <laughs> yeah, seriously, I'll probably go on my 34th birthday, seriously. It's not something we do very often, so it was pretty fun. I actually felt good this morning. I got at least five hours of sleep in bed, so. That's good, that's good. But yeah, just won four hundred and fifty bucks. I lost a hundred bucks. Okay. And <laughs> I literally lost a hundred bucks. I went upstairs, put like twenty bucks in a slot machine, won my money back, went back downstairs, placed like two more bets on the table, lost that, walked upstairs. Jess is like, I gotta go to the bathroom. Dude, she was like one eighty five. She only put like thirty bucks in the machine. By the time she got back, it was like three fifty. Then she put like ten bucks in the machine next to me, won another two hundred. So she walked out with four hundred and fifty bucks. I was like, Oh yes. Fuck yeah, bro. Yeah, I dude. I don't think I've ever won at the casino. I never win. Never. She and made fun of me so much last night. Every time you go, you play that blackjack and real light and crap, so you never win shit. And I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> I play my U-spin machine and I win every time. I'm like, I know. Dude, yeah. I don't know if some of it's just like, am I just putting bad energy out there because I don't ever expect to win? Like sometimes Probably because I, I feel like I'm the same exact way. Dude, I, 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 want, like, I went, I was probably 21 or 22. I went up there with $20. And I was probably up at one point forty or fifty bucks, and then I ended up losing it all. And I was just I was playing roulette, and I was like, "Fuck this!" And I haven't gambled since. Really? Nope. I don't. That's awesome. This has been well over a decade. I just don't gamble. If people ask me, it can be the the dumbest shit. They'll be like, "I bet you five bucks something." I'm like, "Nope, don't do it." I don't gamble. <laughs> like I just, sure. I hate losing the money. It pisses me off more than anything. Yeah, no, my, I was like, dude, walking back up to the stairs upstairs to the slot machine after the second time I lost a hundred bucks, I was like, why do I feel so uneasy right now? I just felt uneasy, you know. I was like, shit, I work really hard right now. I just opened it. I'm like, not trying to lose any money, but you know, it was my birthday. I'm having a little fun. Yeah, you know, but it's so it made it way better. I guess that's why we only go like maybe once a year. Yeah, so. I feel like you just kind of have to go. At, with like the the perspective of oh I'm just spending this money for entertainment yeah like exactly. you you can't go and like oh well I'm I'm gambling or I hope I win like in my mind it just has to be spent already it's like all right well Seriously. I got a hundred bucks let's go spend it at the casino if you come back with more than that fantastic but if you lose it all then no I big mean, deal you already you already like accounted for spending that. That's why I guess that one one eight hundred bets off's a real thing because people get crazy. The guy next to me dropped down like I think he got like ten one hundred dollar bills out and got like a shit ton of five dollar chips. But he was playing the twenty one plus three, and then on the other plus three was like a premium. So he got like two flushes in a row and got really? like I won nine hundred twenty bucks two hands in a row. Dude. So he's like, I want to color those up, and the the and of course he's like. He knew the dealer because you could tell that he goes there all the time. So yeah. who knows how much money he's losing or winning. But he just won like 1800 bucks, just pockets it. And 20 minutes later, almost all the chips on the table that he had were gone. 
Really? But he sold like 1800 bucks. And he's like, no, I'm not sitting here. And the lady's like, sit down. I don't remember his name or anything. But they were like shooting the shit and all that other stuff. I'm just like, it's crazy when you go to a place like that and all the dealers know your name. Like, you can't be winning money. No, the house always wins. It has to be like your hobby. Yeah. It turns into, I guess, a hobby for them. Yeah. Like it does my mother because she likes to go play her keynote yeah. and shit. So. I had a friend in college who uh, he was really big on poker. Like, that was his game. And uh, sometimes he would go to the casino and he'd lose, but he's like, he'd always be like, overall, I'm up. <laughs> he's like, I'm down today, but overall, I'm up. Dude, his brother, this has been a lot of years ago, but his brother bought like a really nice Escalade off of, uh, off of his winnings from poker. So it's That's like, amazing. dude, yeah, it blows my mind when like some people will spend in like one hand more than some people will ever make in their whole life. It's crazy. It <laughs> blows my mind. Yeah, yeah. It blows my mind. And I'm just like, what do these people do to have all this money they can just, like, throw away? Dude, on the same note, though, I kind of, like, it's kind of motivating because it's like there's that much money in the world. It's like there's plenty of money out there. It's just like how can I get it? And we're in the best country in the world, too. Yeah. You could literally do whatever the fuck you want. For like, now. literally. For now you can. Well, we still are. Sort I mean, of. They, <laughs> well, I mean. It's getting weird. Us entrepreneurs, man, we're not going to, like, I mean, we can't take no for an answer forever. But no, dude, you definitely can't. Definitely. Like kids not being able to play sports right now is <sighs> what the fuck, dude. And it's so weird. Like, there's this river that separates St. Charles and St. Louis County, and it's just like it's completely different on the other side of that river. It really is. Like they got sports and everything going on. I mean, I'm not trying to talk political or anything, but we're just I, talking. Yeah, I don't know why the Missouri governor hasn't come in. I don't know why it's always like spaced out. So whatever, whatever little power our little St. Louis mayor has can kind of do whatever he wants. Yeah. It's just, it's really weird how governors, it it just rubs me the wrong way. Ditto dude. Well, the thing is, man, like these mayors and these governors, like they're just fucking people. And like, I don't know if they're necessarily equipped to be dealing with this type of level of, we just got to talking about them just being humans. Like they're literally just humans making decisions for thousands of people. We're just people. You know what I mean? And the thing is, it's not like they have some special secret information that, you know, most of the people, like a lot of these, these, at least these local officials, like they're working off the same information. Like they're watching the fucking news and they're, they're using that information to base their decisions and nobody wants to be wrong. You know what I mean? Like, so everybody just errs on the side of caution and it's just like, is that the best decision? Like there's a really good, um, it's like an hour long documentary that Sean, uh, Stevenson made. He, uh, he hosts the, uh, the model health show it was like at one point like the number one health and wellness podcast in the world he's he's actually a st louis native i think he moved back to la maybe i don't know a year ago let's say um but is is really informative it it was based off of um, actual studies he gave you all the links to all the studies so you can go research everything that he said um but it was just talking about how like masks essentially don't work like it doesn't stop the spread of anything. It just dis- like if if I were to wear a mask and I were to cough, it just disperses that out. It doesn't stop it from leaving for sure the mask. And then also one of the studies that he uh, he was talking about when he was talking about the the efficacy of masks was the study was done on mice. Like how does that apply to a real world situation? Like it doesn't. And then like another study he was talking about was. Um, it was talking about like the efficacy of like having like an N95 mask versus just like a surgical mask versus like a cloth mask and like a cloth mask is like the worst that you can fucking wear like they don't work like you're better off just like not wearing a mask like they get they they trap all of this um uh like all of like all of this like fluid and shit and they get damp and then they start building bacteria and it's like it just doesn't fucking work dude and it's just like Instead of looking at, at data and being, like, rational about this situation, it, this is such an emotionally charged time. I would never have suspected that this pandemic, like, pandem- pan- like there's always a pandemic going on. Like, it's not something new. Like, we've had them in the past. We'll have them in the future. But this is such a politically charged thing. For sure. Like, how is, why, why is this political? It's really weird. Like, we're just talking about people's health. We don't want people to die, but yeah, we but also— in America, if you're sick— America makes money. If you're healthy, they fucking don't. Yeah. It's crazy, dude. It's crazy. What gets me is, uh, did you see how they just updated, the CDC just updated the numbers for, for, like, I think it was 
only what it was like six or nine percent. Maybe it was like six. I think it was nine percent of the total deaths. So it was like there was one hundred fifty-one thousand deaths or something attributed to COVID. And then they like nine thousand of them were like actually COVID only COVID right. without any other COVID. Ninety percent of them were seniors. Yeah, most of them are seniors. Yeah, most of them have other health conditions. Two, they said two or three major. Yeah, serious. Exactly. Conditions. So it's never. So if we're talking about healthy people who are dying from this thing, essentially none, right? Essentially right. none. And then also, what gets me the most, at least in this country, and and this is maybe circling back into being in the health profession, right? Like, what's considered normal isn't healthy. It's really not. Like you can look at somebody. Like there's a thing called um, you can be normal weight but metabolically obese. So meaning like you look normal. Maybe somebody has a super fast metabolism and they're skinny. Um, you know, but they're skinny fat people. Like on the inside, they might as well be a 500 pound obese person, even though they look, you know, normal for sure. But they're not living right. They don't eat well. They don't sleep. You know, they don't exercise. They're toxic. Yeah, but dude. Their metabolism is fast to make them look exactly. like they're healthy, but they're really not. Exactly. And, like, the amount of people who have, you know, diabetes in this country, like, if you're born with diabetes, like, that's one thing. But if you develop diabetes, like, that's another thing. And you may look normal, and you may be able to live a normal life with, you know, insulin and treatment and different things like that, but you're not fucking healthy. Right. You, you know what I mean? Like, we've developed with modern science a way for people to live normal lives being unhealthy, and we think that they're healthy. It's really weird. Because we're all being brainwashed to make it feel like it is. I feel like, like you just said, normal people think it's think they're healthy, yeah. and they're not. Yeah. That comes out basically to that typical Midwestern mentality of, oh, I know what to do. I'll do it later. I'm fine. But until you have, like, an underlying condition that's going to, you know, scare you yeah the doctor's like well no you gotta do this listen to your doctor everybody's like well my doctor says well my doctor says my doctor well says. my doctor says well your doctor wants you to be on medication most doctors are idiots <laughs> well most doctors want you just to be on medication yeah i get that you have diabetes and you're obese and you got to be on this stuff but why don't you try to go for a walk or why instead of replacing a hamburger with an apple every day so if you have 365 apples in a year you're technically delaying chronic illness and disease I personally believe we're living our whole life to delay chronic illness and disease as long as possible so our lives are quality instead of shit. Yeah. Because as soon as your lives go to shit, what the hell do you have to live for anymore? Yeah, dude. Like, I tell people all the time, like, I'm going to live to be 100. And, like, I truly believe that. Like, I'm going to be a centurion for sure, unless barring some crazy shit. But, like, the goal really isn't to live, like, to, like, get the most years out of my life. It's like, I'm just trying to get the most life out of my years, really. Like, I don't want to be 100 and decrepit. You know what I mean? Like For of, sure. Of, of course the body's going to break down at some point. Yeah. going to fucking die. But it's like, dude, I'm just trying to get the most out of this life. And a lot of people, man, they're just, like, they don't know how good they can feel. They really don't. And they're just, they're just kind of just, like, going through life. And, like, just very, it's like, it, <sighs> I don't know what the word I want to use, but it's like there's it's just this this dull flatness. It's like they're just existing. You know what I'm saying? It's just really weird. And a lot of these doctors, like of course they're intelligent people, but I, some of the smartest people I know do the dumbest shit. <laughs> like how many people in the healthcare industry have you seen standing outside of a hospital smoking cigarettes? All the time. <sighs> All the time. Or they're they're overweight or they're they're drinking sodas and like but this is supposed to be the person I take health information from they're just going to give you a pill they're not going to talk about lifestyle they're not going to say well are you sleeping are you are you walking are you drinking water are you getting sunlight like they don't go over any of that like what's your nutrition like right it's crazy i go over like the same process that i do every morning with my clients how you doing today you doing all right how's your body that's the first question i say how's your body feeling yeah that's a good question i say that every day to every single person how's your body feeling you know, let's warm up a little bit. You feeling you need to stretch, just stretch out. Like, I want to make sure that even though I teach group personal training, each individual knows that I know everything about them. Yeah. Everything about them. And it's like, if someone I haven't seen in two or three weeks because they have an injury and they're coming back, they're coming back, every single day I'm going to be like, dude, Amber, how's your ankle doing? Yeah. So her, she's a little upset. Like, well, then why the fuck are you doing squat jacks? Why don't you just grab weight and do normal squats so you don't have to put all that pressure on your ankle? Oh, yeah, good idea. Yeah. She's so just like pinpointing all these little things. But yeah. But you're right about that. They are dull, flat lining. They're living. They're they're not living, but they're living. Right. You know, they think they're just going through life all, you know, all candy and fun. Mm -hmm. All the time, dude. All the time. Man, it's like, 
again, like just people don't know how good they can feel until they do. You're right. It's really weird. Because the only 15 minutes of movement a day makes you feel so much better. Yeah. Literally. Literally. Just getting a little sweat on makes you feel so much better. When I don't work out for like two or three days, I'm not kidding you. I get borderline fucking depressed. Dude, like, for real. Like, I'm like, okay. My wife will look at me and be like, you need to, you need to go out for a few hours. I'll be, like, I'll be back in two hours. Because when I get back in two hours, I'm going to be a totally revitalized guy. I'm going to get a little workout in. I'm going to keep a little time to myself. I wouldn't really – I mean, call it meditation. Call it what you want, you know. It's how you find, like, your souls within you, you know. You're yeah. just developing more character for yourself. You're trying to – I mean, basically, I just want to try to value myself as much as I can. And I'm going to just say straight out that I'm super ignorant and selfish when it comes to me wanting my own time. I need, like, 30 minutes to an hour a day to myself to fucking feel normal. And mainly when I'm doing that, I'm just, like, working out and I'm moving. I'm just doing different movements and patterns because it makes me feel really good. And since I've developed a habit of doing it for the last 10 years, when I don't do it for a few days, I'm like, man, there's something missing in my life. I'm getting depressed. My blood hasn't been boiling in my body. I need some, like – I need to release. I need it like, cause I'm, like, I'm a super hyperactive guy, as you can tell. My whole life I've been. So I've never, I hate sitting down for long periods of time. I'll start twitching. I'll start moving. I'll just start doing whatever. <laughs> but it's just like, I just got to go out and do it. So, I mean, my wife works weekend nights. So when she, she works usually Friday night, Saturday night, and Monday night. So I wake up at 5 a.m., train till like, you know, maybe noonish or whatever. I'll go home, hang out with the kids, and then I'm back here by like 4 o'clock every day till like 8. Mm-hmm. And that's my lifestyle now. Go to bed at like not, between 9 and 10, wake up at 5 a.m., get here again. And when the weekend comes, I'm with my kids all by myself. So I'm trying to find where I can piece in the gaps where I can spend time on myself. Yeah, yeah. And I'm still trying to develop that because sometimes I, I run so many classes, maybe every once in a while someone doesn't show up. And I'm like, wow, I'm actually glad no one's here for class today because I can fucking get an awesome workout in and feel so good. The best example I have is what I tell people is – my wife would be like, hey, what are you doing? You want to you hang out today? I'd be like, yeah, let's hang out today. She's like, let's go here. Let's go there. I'd be like, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> before we like make our target trip, before we go to the park, and before we do all this other shit, I got to go fucking work out. Yeah. Because the only thing that's going to be on my mind all day long doing all this fun stuff with my family, in the back of my head, I'm going to be like, I need to work out. I need to do this today. I need to focus on this. I need to, I, you know, and I'm just like playing this mental ping pong game with me while I'm trying to be present with my family. Mm. And if I can't get that exertion out and that awesome workout in to focus on myself before I devote all my time to my family and all that stuff, sounds selfish and ignorant. But you know what? I have to do that. And sure as hell, if I can get my awesome workout in before we make our target trip or kind of running our errands and doing what we do with the family, I'm like, yeah, let's do it. You know, like I feel so good. Yeah. I feel so good. But if I don't do that, it's just like on my mind the whole time. And then we'll get done and be like, oh, you know what? I don't even fucking feel like working out anymore. Yeah. I'm fucking dead. I've already like my brain's fried of me thinking, wanting to do this. And now the thought of actually going to do it doesn't sound too pleasing right now. Yeah. And then it makes me feel like more shit that I did. Dude, it's a vicious cycle. It man. is, man. It really I is. Mean, as a fitness professional, we all still go through it. I'm only human too, and we all go through the same same feelings. Yeah, man. Yeah. Like if I don't sweat, I can feel the difference. Like there's just this buildup of this shit in my system. It's like, oh, I got to sweat. When I sweat, yeah. I feel so much better. And if I only have a half an hour, it's like, okay, great. Then my warm-up has to be 10 times harder because I have to start sweating after five minutes instead of after like 20, 30 minutes. Because if I'm just leisurely working out, I'll get a sweat on 15, 20 minutes. And then I'm like, okay, good. I feel great. Now I can hit it hard. Yeah. If I know I only get like 30 minutes to work out, my warm-up has to be like a five-minute warm-up and I'm like sweating after five minutes and I'm tired of shit. So those last 25 minutes, I can kind of just do whatever I want but still feel like I got that hour workout. And so obviously your tempo, your duration, and right. everything has to like increase because you don't <laughs> have that much time to spend on yourself. So, yeah, man, you can get a lot done in a short amount of time, dude. Like, Hell yeah. Like a four minute Tabata, so 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. Hell yeah. You know, you do eight rounds of that, it's four minutes, dude. You're fucking toast. You do burpees for four minutes. 20 done. Second, 20 seconds on, 10 seconds off. You're fucking toast. Done. It doesn't take a lot of time if you really don't have a lot of time. But, um, dude, yeah, it's, I, dude, I don't think it's selfish, man. I think it's just, I think it's necessary. And I feel some like. Some would call it selfish. Some would. I, they're wrong. That's the thing. It's like, it's, I, it's it, like when you're on a plane. It's probably the most common example I've ever heard. It's like when you're on a plane and the fucking oxygen mask drops down, they tell you to put your mask on before you put it on somebody else. Because if you don't take care of you, you cannot take care of anybody else. Of course. Period. So it's like so many people want to act like, you know, 
you need to like selflessly give, 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 give. But if you're always giving, then you have nothing left. You know what I mean? So it's like, man, you got if I, I absolutely have to, self care is the most important thing like in the world. I feel like I absolutely have to like go do certain things to like be right mentally and physically, so that way I can give to my family. I feel like it's just of course it's like you gotta it's like practice what hack. you preach too. We're health professionals. We're fitness professionals. We gotta practice what we preach. Like you said, there's doctors smoking outside the building, and then you go into the building to get advice from them when they're smoking cigarettes. Yeah, and they definitely know what's wrong for them. So it's like, do they? I mean, they probably do care, but it's like yeah. we really care. Yeah. But in order for us to help other people, we have to help ourselves. You have to love yourself. Yeah. To give love to other people. Right. That is like the biggest thing for me. And I always tell people at the end of the day, you're alone and you're going to shut your eyes. And the only thing that you have is your own brain driving crazy, crazy shit in your head. Cause that's probably my biggest problem. When I hit that bed at nighttime, I go through my whole day and I'm like, what can I make it better? What can I do? And then I always want to see myself five or 10 years in the future in my, like every night before I go to sleep. Okay. And I think that just fucking keeps me up all night long just cause I'm unsatisfied. Yeah. It's like for years and years, I wanted like my own gym. I've been in business for only three months here in this building and I'm already thinking like, dude, what's next? What's next? But I got to kind of ground myself a little bit. Obviously I got to try to grow a lot more. Yeah. It's obviously like a slow growth because of COVID and everything, but there's definitely traction. But I'm already thinking like, what's next for me? Like, where can I be? What can I do? Yeah. It never ends. Like, I don't know how people can just like be stagnant in life and not like want more. Like I want, even though I have so little, I want like, I want it all. Yeah. I want it all. All of it, bro. And I'm never going to fucking stop. I always tell myself, I'm never selling out for anybody. Like I've always wanted to be my own boss. I've always wanted to be on my own plan. I'm like, if this doesn't work, I'm still – if I have to go to 95 to start another business, I will because I want to be my own boss forever. Yeah. Yeah, dude. I'm 100% with you, dude. 100% with you, man. Like, um, ah, fuck. I lost my thought, Zach. Sorry. I lost it, bro. I love your passion, though. I fucking love – yeah. I, dude, there's no way I could I could work for somebody. Just so many people just get, like, get stagnant, and it's like they don't they don't have – like any big goals for themselves they're just like oh i'm just super content with wherever i'm at in life it's like okay well maybe it doesn't have to be like a financial goal maybe it's like just a personal goal make maybe you want to start reading more books or maybe you want to start walking more um do you so when you lay down at night like are you like visualizing like do you do visualization all the time i would i would <laughs> it's so fucking crazy this gym looks exactly how i pictured it in my head really Exactly. Obviously, I didn't get like a lot of the equipment that I wanted to purchase because of COVID and everything else that came yeah. up. But it literally looks exactly how I pictured it. Really, with the paint on the walls, the Good. burnt wood baseboards, the desk, like everything looks yeah. exactly how I wanted it to look. Beautiful and it, space, it like man. it just like came together. Yeah, it just came together really slow. Dude, and this is a great. This would be a space I'd be proud to work out of for sure. Thank you. Yeah, I I really like it, and I can't believe it's. <laughs> that I'm sitting in it right now. Dude, rad, it brings bro. me down, and I'm super humbled. Like, I am so humbled, and I am so blessed, man. Uh, it took almost exactly a full year since I saw this place opened up because of all, like, the shit that basically municipalities and other counties make you go through to open up a business. J dude, the small business owner is getting dicked so hard right now. So many loopholes and just different things. And I yeah. mean, just because at this location, I had to file, like, a special use permit. That was a few hundred bucks. Because this isn't like typically – like this isn't the, the typical business you'd have in this type of space. It's Yeah, since it's industrial, like an yeah. industrial area because like obviously there's like um, neighborhoods – like neighborhoods surrounding like the building because yeah. of like maybe noise or whatever business was going to go on. So I had to like give a whole spiel in front of the Planning and Zoning Commission like three weeks after I had a file for the permit because they only have meetings once a month. They had to approve my location. Then after they approved my location, I had to wait another month to give the same spiel to like all the aldermen and the mayor and the city administrator. And then all the aldermen had to decide, hmm, do we want Zach to have a gym in that space? They, the planning and zoning and them dictated my future. Oh, wow. Literally, they get to decide if I can have a gym in this spot. Holy shit, dude. Then once the aldermen were like, yeah, all you need is a blueprint on everything that you're going to have in there. And then you give them the spiel, and then they have questions for you, and you answer the questions, and then they're like, I, 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 all in favor, blah, blah, blah. And they're like, great. From then on, it's like, okay, now I can actually have the space. But then it's like, like I said, it took us like four months to negotiate the lease. I signed my lease in January. I was supposed to open in April. March, COVID hit. Yeah. But luckily, my landlord was like, 
you know, Zach, you've told us a lot of really good things. We're, we want we want to be there for you. So let's how about how about May? And I was like, that would be awesome. Thank you. COVID's still here. How about June? I'd be like, really? So they were working with you. They were working with me. Nice. And I said I had to have like my insurance policy on the building before I could even do any work. Right. So that took a long time because of all the bouncing back and training kids under 12 and trying to get like the surplus policy instead so I can be covered. I couldn't even get here to paint or work or even clean the floors. It took me like 15 hours just to clean the floors to put the mats down because of how dirty and dusty they were. It was insane. Oh, you wow. walk through it and you're kicking up dust. Oh, shit. You would never get All over the walls, pulling like... <laughs> thousand staples out of the wall covering <laughs> holes everywhere so i had about a month to renovate like the whole space he gave me so basically he gave me i was only supposed to have 21 days of build out time before my lease actually started but i got about 35 40 days nice because then i guess uh, in the middle of i guess at the end of april he's like obviously covid's still here and Paige came out the announcement of jim's opening june 15th he's like let's just make it july 1st so then I had my grand opening on July 1st. From like June and July, I got this whole place ready to rock and roll. And then that's why I only posted like a week before I was opening yeah. for the grand opening thing. So then I had a grand opening on July 1st, and then I started running classes on July 6th. Whoa. Dude, that's a hell of a process to get a business started. It is People crazy. don't realize what goes into opening a small business. A lot. A lot of sacrifice, a lot of time, and just like a lot of heart. Like it. Like, uh, a lot of times I was just like, what the fuck am I getting myself into? Like, do I really want to do Like, yeah, I want to do this. Like I said earlier, it's like, why is it so hard to fucking want to help people? I want to help people so bad, and I want to show people that I love fitness, and I'm really good at it, and I can show you how you can reach your goals safe and effectively and being in a place of love and passion and where you can work your ass off and get uncomfortable without feeling uncomfortable. Yeah. And dude, you train, dude, you're training, you're training kids, you're training seniors, you're training high level professional athletes, you're fucking training high school athletes. I saw you working um, with a kid who has autism the other day. Yeah, like, dude, that you was were, awesome. Yeah, dude, that's fucking phenomenal, man. Like you're working with just, just all of these different types of people, just the whole gamut, dude. While implementing my style of training with all of them. Right. Well, your your style of training is what makes that possible. For sure. Right? I mean, you do a lot of, like, hand-eye coordination shit. For sure. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. More with the athletes and right, stuff. Right, with the athletes. I've noticed you've been doing that a Someone lot. walks in the door and, like, wants to lose 30 or 40 pounds who's unhealthy. I'm going to – That's different program. Yeah, I'm going to throw them just through crazy functional exercises. It's basically just, like, your push, your pull, your hinge, your squat, and then, like, bouncing yeah. off of those once they get those down. And yeah. obviously, if they haven't worked out, you got to work on a lot of connective tissue buildup before they can start loading heavy weights and doing more complex exercise. And it's like, mm -hmm. well, I want to do jump rope. It's like, well, you – can't even fucking do a squat properly with your feet out hurting. So what makes you think you want to jump on your feet? Because all that's going to hurt is the bottom of your feet. Yeah. You know what I mean? So it's just like making sure that everything's accommodated for each individual. Yeah. Yeah. Do you prefer more of like the the agility type training? Do you like to do that? Because you're a soccer guy. I really like just training like high level athletes. Yeah. Like you probably have a lot of fun with Julius. Oh man, it is it's awesome. Any type of athlete really who wants to put in the work. Yeah. Because if like you're willing to put in the work and you're willing to just shut the fuck up and listen, you're good. You're going to be a great student, mm -hmm. and you can level up however the way you want. Just listen. Do what you're supposed to do. You have questions, ask. But yeah. other than that, it's just like, this is what we're doing. This is what you need to work on. And I go through like a full – like I have like my own assessment program of like pretty much like after an hour of working with an athlete, I know exactly what gaps I need to fill in to make them a better athlete. Yeah. Like, like at like that easily, nice. whether that be hand-eye coordination or balance drills or working on a little bit of like reaction time or speed. It, it doesn't matter. You can, you could find a person and be like, wow, that person's so unbalanced. If we don't start doing like more balance drills with some strength training, they're never going to be more agile. Yeah. Yeah. Ever. Yeah. Dude, there's, there's so many like, high level athletes who have a lot of like imbalances fuck yeah some of the best athletes in the world have imbalances it's crazy it is it's, it, it is it's how talented you could be but not be as functional with your body right yeah it's because you're just you're just like you develop specifically for x sport mm -hmm. right and then you don't develop these other things to kind of counter that constant thing you're doing for sure I love working with kids. Kids are really fun to work with. You can see the potential in kids. You can see the kids who don't care. So the kids who really don't care, you don't spend as much time with. 
Yeah. You know, you don't talk to them as much. You don't try to, you don't try to get on a level where they want to be at, but you see kids like working out, encouraging other kids. You want to teach kids leadership skills while they're working out. And then you see kids that aren't good at stuff, still encouraging the ones that are good at stuff who don't want to do it. They're like, come on, man, you could do it. I had two little twins in my class on Monday, first class, eight years old, last exercise, up downs, kids that have been coming for like a month, you know, great kids. Awesome. They're tired. They're doing up. The two little kids are like, come on, let's go. We're almost done. We're almost done. Nice. Their aunt has did my class and they're like, they can't stop talking about your class. They're signing up on Monday. And I was like, dude, that is so awesome. They're Love such yeah. good kids. They're going to be such good kids to have in class because they're so encouraging to other people. Yeah. So if they kid, continue that, they'll be just good people in life. Exactly. Exactly. And I, I mean, I've met some of the best, like you, I've met through fitness. Yeah. Almost everybody that I associate with, I've met through either the gym or doing something fitness related. Yeah. Dude, it's a hell of a community. It is. It really it is. is. It really is. But I do love uh, working with high-level athletes. And I yeah. do like a lot of the speed and agility stuff. But I love functional training, and I love helping anyone and everyone. Yeah, man. I mean – the idea that you have to like you have to just come in here and just like do this this bodybuilding type structure or it's arm day it's leg day it's back day it's chest day like i feel like that's kind of antiquated i mean there's definitely some benefit to that especially if you want to kind of like maybe mold your body a little bit but yeah the functional movement dude like you don't have to come in here and when you leave you feel like dog shit there are so many trainers who like pride themselves on just like just beating down their clients i hate that i hate that i hate that dude if it's their first day i'd be like okay you're gonna see people in here working really hard. and i try to like bring down my excitement a little bit because i'm always like so excited like i don't want to run them off with my excitement you know? i'm like hey man there's been people coming here a lot a couple of people come twice a day for the last few months they look out of shape but they're in like really good shape so all i'm gonna tell you is just just go really slow go through the movements and then two seconds later, you see him going, <laughs> and they're like fucking dying. I'm like, hey, man, do you want to be sore for the next 10 days in a row? Or do you just want to wake up tomorrow feeling like, wow, I got a really good workout in yesterday so right. you can move and be functional again? Yeah. They're like, yeah, I want to be like that. And usually it's like you can tell, man, they're busting ass like the whole time. And guess what? I'll never see him again because it's like, what would I go work out? And kill my body and be sore for 10 days or literally like five or six days not being able to like walk and shit. It's like, yeah. well, because you didn't go slow. You didn't go through the movements in a 30 second round. You're supposed to do like six or seven squats, not 25 jumping squats right. like everyone else. Yeah. You haven't worked out your legs in forever. By the end of it, you're going to be throwing up. You're not going to move your legs for three or four days and then you don't see me again. But they see other people working around them and they're just excited. Yeah. But you just try to bring them down. Everything. It's like, just slow down. It's okay. I'm not yeah. trying to kill you. Yeah. We're trying to learn. We're trying to be functional. Just do your thing and yeah. don't worry about anyone else. Bro, no pain, no gain. For real. They're like, yeah, man, but if I uh, – it's like, dude, just relax. Bro, I got this. <laughs> yeah, seriously. No, nah, man. It's dude, like, your push-ups are really good right now, but if you go to your knees, they'll be way better. It's like, no, dude, I'll, I'll do it. I'm like, okay. Dude, you just got to take the ego out of it. You do, man. That's I a mean, big learning lesson. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Because if people are like, dude, Zach, can you do this? I'd be like, no, I can't do that. There's a lot of shit I can't You're do. You're a trainer and you can't do that? It's like, dude, I'm being honest. I'm not even going to try because I don't want to get hurt. Dude, there's a lot of shit I can't do, man. Like, the, I could teach somebody how to do a squat, and I, I honestly, I have such poor mobility in my ankles that I can't even do, like, the best squat in the world. But it's just like, man, I know my limitations. But you and I can know teach what I'm working. It. Yeah, exactly. So it's just like, dude, we all have our own limitations. For sure. There's a lot of shit that I can't. I mean, there's shit. Everything that I, me and Julius go through, I kind of, like, go through it maybe a few days before, and I try to go through some of the drills and stuff. But there's things that I, that he can do that I fucking can't do because he's a beast. Yeah. Yeah. He's just a monster. And when you're a coach, I mean, that's a part of it. Like, especially if you're training high-level athletes, of exactly. course they're doing things yeah. <laughs> I physically can't do right Seriously. now. Seriously. Yeah, dude. The best way is, uh, I guess it was Tiger Woods. He's like, I, the only reason I'm the best in the world is because of my coach. Yeah. It's like the coach isn't nearly as good as Tiger Woods, but he can teach people how to be the best in the world because he knows and can practice. And yeah. obviously – same as coaches, basketball coaches that have never played in the NBA, yeah. but they're phenomenal coaches just because yeah. they know the game really well and they got a great basketball IQ. Yeah, I think it helps to have actually like maybe done whatever it is you're helping, like in some capacity. Like if you're a basketball coach, it helps to have at least maybe like been on the basketball team like, for sure, played a little bit. It doesn't mean yeah, you yeah. have to be the absolute best. Don't be a tattoo artist without any tattoos. Yeah, type <laughs> shit. You see a lot of people doing yeah, that. They do. I hey, know. Man. <laughs> It's like, dude, I know all the theory. I know all the theory, but there's something like, like whenever I'm helping fighters, like I've been in that cage. Mm -hmm. I know what they're going through. I've went through camp. I know what it feels like to lose. I know what it feels like to win. And um, just having that insight can, it can definitely help. 
Absolutely. To get somebody through whatever it is they're going through. Just just a little bit of insight. Of course. Goes a long way. I'm not a professional athlete, but I have heart. I know it doesn't work my ass off and be but in phenomenal shape. But you're an athlete. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? Athlete like at heart. Work. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, dude. Well, dude, fuck, man. Like, I never, growing up, I never did any, like, intense, like, sport leagues. Like, I mean, I pl- I've always played sports growing up, but, like, I wasn't on that that uh like that baseball team or that soccer team that was you know club and you're traveling all the time and like dude that is a hellacious schedule for a lot of kids that's some high level shit dude for real and like that's what you did growing up so like you know what the grind is like at least for sure i mean when i was 15 years old, like i said my parents didn't make a shit ton of money they're trying to support seven kids taking us to catholic schools i wanted to play club soccer my dad's like great well you can get a job and you can pay for it yeah i was like all right, mom, you got to find me a job. She's like, all right, my friend owns Emo's. You can get a job at Emo's. I work Friday or I work Saturday and Sundays from nine to five. Every check I got to give to my dad. And then if I, if I wanted something fun, I'd be like, all right, dad, give me like 50, 60 bucks. When I ask him. He's like, all right, well, you got a tournament coming up. I'm like, all right. So I literally busted my ass every weekend when I wasn't working, I was out of town playing soccer. And every check I got went to my dad to pay for soccer for like three years straight. Nice. Is that, but that's so like, I made money to play soccer, not make money to go drink with my friends, even though that was still fun and I still did that. But like my main priority was I want to play soccer. I want to get a scholarship. I want to play in college. So you were driven. You knew what the goal was. And I did all three of them. Yeah. You, did you visualize then too? Have you always kind of like try to think about like where you want to be at the future and just kind of obsessed over it? All the that, time. Yeah. That 12-week challenge program that I ran last year or two years ago. I had that same exact program written on a piece of paper from five years previous. Really? Jessica was pulling something out of a drawer, and we were looking through it, and I was like, dude, Jess, look at this. It yeah. was like literally the same program that I had like visualized I wanted to run. Yeah. And I had and I was doing it, and I had did it without looking back at that piece of paper. Nice. And all the time, really, on my new piece of paper, I was like a new format, some different lingo, but everything was like pretty much the same thing. I learned about a vision board when I was like 18 years old. So something, obviously, sometimes I'd have a vision board and, like, write down my thoughts and write down where I want to be in, like, two or three years. But it's always been in my head. That's why I'm yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm always in my head. I'm my worst critic. I, like, am so harder on myself than anyone ever was. Yeah. I played the best soccer game in my whole life, score four, four goals, and my dad would sit in the car and be like, I played a really good game. I'd play – I'd have – and I'd be, like, on top of the world, like, damn. But, Dad, did you see that one play? Did you – my dad would be like, Zach, relax. You played a really good game. Like, he would humble me, you know? Yeah. He, my good. dad was, like, the greatest at, like, removing my ego. And I feel like I, I don't have one. I don't feel like I'm better than anybody. I want to help anyone and everyone. And I thoroughly enjoy seeing people succeed. Yeah. Like, I love seeing people succeed. So, I'd have the worst game in my life. And I'd be like, fuck this. And I'd start crying. I'd be at the car. I'd be, this is so stupid. I don't even know if I'm going to start the next game. You know, you got to start. You know, you, you play. You work your ass off. You're yeah. competing with all these other players on your team to play over them. And he would look at me and be like, it's okay. It wasn't your best game. Hey, Zach, it's just a game. That's literally what he'd say. He's like, Zach, I love you. It's just a game. He would never get mad at me. He'd never yell at me. He would never be negative. I would always be so much harder on myself than my parents ever were when it yeah. came to schooling, when it came to sports, when it came to friends, when it came to relationships, everything. Yeah. I like to see that, though, like, especially, like, when my son, like, he'll get pissed off at something, like, he didn't do as well as he wanted to, he get pissed off, it's just, like, I don't like that he's getting that mad, but I also love that he's getting that mad, because it shows sure. me he fucking cares, yeah. it's like, dude, like, let that shit burn, because that shit will teach you a lesson. I will never forget whenever I was a little kid, I was on this, tra- I, actually, you know what I did, I was, I think in third grade, I was on one traveling baseball team for a season, and uh, we lost this really big game to this other team, and I, I, we were all crying afterwards. It's like, it's like the playoffs, you know what I mean? I just remember how sad I fucking felt, dude. But I still, 30, you know, I'm about to be 33 in December, and it's like, I still remember that. Like, I remember how shitty that felt. And it's like, whether I was, what, 9 or 10 at that time, or I'm, you know, 28 fighting and I lose or something. It's like, the pain of defeat is the pain of defeat, dude. It sure is, man. You, you know, if you let it fucking, if you learn from it and you let it drive you, like, it can take you some really good places for sure. Dude, I still remember all the penalty kicks I missed, you know, from like grade <laughs> school and high school and shit. I obsess over all dude, that shit, man, Dude, man, when we were in college, we played the national, cha- they were in our, uh, they were like in our, um, our region and we beat them twice and they ended up winning nationals. We got a big upset in the region semifinal, and then they played the team in the region final. They won and then crushed every team in the national tournament. So hold on. You got the upset. 
You beat them in the semis? They beat us in the semis. Uh. So it was Jeffco, Force Park, Merrimack. Merrimack lost to Force Park in the region semifinal. Jeffco and Force Park played in the region final. Jeffco won and then demolished every team in the national tournament in Tyler, Texas. And we had beat that team 2-0 both times we played them in the regular season. Whoa. So basically they scored within the first 10 minutes, Force Park did, and then they just packed it in the box. No excuse, but we just we just didn't finish. Yeah, well, we just got... couldn't finish. You know, they had two flank runners, and then they had eight people in the box the whole time. They wanted and it. They 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 they, and they won. Yeah, and that's something I think about because I was like, dude, I could have been a national champion, but I, but in my heart I am, you know. But yeah, on paper I'm not. On the trophy I'm not. Right. Yeah. Well, dude, it's just like it's that whole idea of like you can't ever get complacent and just assume it's in the bag. My sophomore year, we lost to Jeffco in the region final. Really. We Dang. made it all the way to the region final, and then we lost against them. Dang. So, you know, it was, it was bittersweet, though. And then <laughs> after that, after college, uh, I was actually that semester, I went to an EMT school, was okay. an EMT, and was like, I don't want to do that. I told my mom and dad, since I was 18 years old, I wanted to be some sort of, like, trainer. I didn't know what type I wanted to be, but I started looking way more into it. I started, you know, caring about my body a little bit more. I was, like, a small, petite guy just like I am now, but I wanted to fill out a little more. I wanted to be healthy, and I didn't know how to do that. So I started doing more research. I was like, ooh, personal trainer. That sounds kind of cool. So I had that personal training thing in the back of my head when I was, like, 18 years old. You've always been a little health conscious. Yeah, because if I could be an EMT, paramedic, firefighter, it means I only work nine days a month. It means I could be a trainer 20 other days during the month. So even when I was 18, I visualized me being, like, a trainer sometime in the future so when I was 21 I actually got certified I told my mom and dad I'm not gonna because I got a few offers from like Bellarmine in Kentucky there's uh almost all the kids that I played college ball with at Merrimack went to Webster to play I could have played at Webster there's a couple of like maybe Rockhurst they're pretty good yeah like D3 D2 schools in AI I probably wasn't good enough to play D1 or I just didn't get enough exposure or I don't know Long story short, I didn't want to spend all that type of money because if I wasn't going to get a big enough scholarship, then I wasn't about to go spend all that money yeah. on something I didn't even know what I was going to do. Merrimack had a paramedic program, and that's why the reason I went there. They gave me a scholarship to play, and that was that. I got financial aid because my parents didn't make a lot of money, and I wasn't working, so everything worked out really, really well. I told my mom and dad, I'm getting certified as a personal trainer. They're like, you're what? You can't do that, Zachary. <laughs> you got to get a job. You got to go to school. You got to get good grades. You got to work nine to five. You got to work to your 65 and you can retire. You're going to have your nice little picket fence and your wife and your kids and you can retire at 60. I'm like, I'm totally down to work until I'm dead because I want to be my own boss. I want to help other people. There's just, a, there's just another level of like clarity that you're just not being told what to do. Yeah. So I'd say for the first like year, like, me and my father didn't have any business discussions at all. Like, I love my father, and he's always been, like, you know, my biggest cheerleader type of guy. But he was like, you can't do that. Just didn't understand. He didn't understand. Like, he, he's corporate his whole life. He worked for the same company. He's 70 now. He just retired, but he's worked for the same company since he was in his 20s. Oh, wow. He has no idea what it's like to be out of, like, corporate, you know? So he's like, you can't do that, Zach. He would literally call me and be like, did you apply to McDonald's? <laughs> did you apply to Gold's Gym? Did you apply to Club Fitness? I'm like, Dad, I'm not working for anybody. Like, I'm going to get certified, and I'm going to go to people's houses. You're going to – you're gonna. that doesn't even make any sense. I'm like, dude, Dad, you've never heard of, like, a home personal trainer? He's like, no, I think I charged 25 bucks an hour when I first started in 2009 to travel. Dude, I went to, like, Kirkwood, then the U-City, back out to Kirkwood. Then a couple years – like, a year later, I was driving down to Jefferson – downtown every week twice a week oh, wow. so i was just like all over st louis i had this blue fucking duffel bag with a six pound medicine ball <laughs> like two 15 pound uh dumbbells in my hand some a mat and some resistance bands and that's all i brought with me to every single house because obviously i was a body functional specialist i'm trying to learn all these like exercises for your body you don't need any equipment really but i just had some to be like okay i'm a trainer here i go and i'd take that to local parks and stuff and you know i didn't really talk to my dad at all like i loved him i hugged and kissed him we had great family and uh, a yeah. family like father-son relationship but he didn't like what i was doing yeah but i also learned not to seek for other people's approval even if right. it's like your father mm -hmm. or your mother like you can't seek approval from anybody no nope. and you can't put expectations in anybody because if like, if I put expectations in you, Adam, and you don't reach my expectations, that's my problem. Yeah. Not yours. So there's just, like, this big thing I have with, like, not putting expectations in people because if they don't meet them, then that, that kind of falls on me, it's not the person. Leads disappointment every time. Yeah, so years go by, and, you know, I'm still doing my thing. I'm still training and doing whatever, and, you know, he hears through the grapevine, oh, do you know Zach, blah, 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 and 
it took him years and years and be like, man, I'm so proud of you, you know? Yeah. And it's not even like I was waiting for that because I know my fucking dad loves me so much. I think your parents just don't want to see you fail. Right. But they saw me fail for the last 10 years. Right. You know what I mean? That's the only reason why I am where I am today is because the choices I made 10 years ago. Just kept failing forward. It took me 11 years to open this little tiny place. <laughs> you know what I mean? But here I am. Dude, it's fucking <laughs> Here right. I am. Yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. You made, believer. you made a believer out of him, dude. And it's like, but yeah, it was probably coming from a place of love, right? He just wanted I think to be so. yeah, successful. Yeah. He just wanted like he's and, scared and he's just telling you what he knows for sure that's it exactly but i was like not having any of it yeah i was like dude that is like not the way i want to live my life yeah i'm down to suffer and fail a whole bunch but i want to do what i want well it's good you had that perspective because i mean we're the same age so it's like so many kids you know like they just went to college because that's what they were told to do you're supposed to do that. For that's sure. What, that's what I did. And it's like, that's what you're supposed to do. And it's like, you don't want to be a loser, do you? It's like, well, fuck, man. I guess I'm a loser if I don't go do this thing. I fortunately had the opportunity to, his name's John Knight, and he married my best friend from grade school's older sister. So by the time I was like 16, 17 years old, they were part of multi-level marketing companies. They were like trying to build that shit. So dude, when I'd go to their house, they would have like meetings like and shit. And I'd, and I would just be like, what the fuck are they talking? They're talking about success. They're talking about leadership. They're talking about like books. They're talking about That's like, dope. they're talking about like self-awareness. They're talking yes. about like perseverance. They're talking yes. about how to like remove excuses. And I'm like, I want that information. So dude, I joined the multi-level marketing company before I was even supposed to. I would have and too. then when I was 18, I signed on and I ended up, you know, falling out of it when I was like 22. I probably made maybe 10, 15 grand in, you know, 5 or 6 years or however the way it was. Um, but basically, it taught me like the best value and like life lessons ever yeah. cuz all I did was saturate myself in books. Probably better in college. Way better. I realized I didn't even, I mean, I still went to college and I wanted to play ball and that was still like a big goal of mine, but like afterwards I was like, dude, I learned so much from like 16 to 21 about like leadership and business than I pretty much ever have even to like this day. Because all the books you read are very similar. Yeah. They all talk about the same exact shit. You're just getting different analogies and you're just getting different perspectives from different people on how they did it. Right. Because the way they did it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to be the way that you did it. Right. Because my wife would – I would literally be on fucking Instagram like you said how toxic it is. I'd fucking be on like Instagram just scrolling, scrolling. I'm like, dude, this dude's 21 years old. He has like 10,000 square foot where his classes are packed. Like, dude, how does a 21, I'd go to my, I'd be like, how does a 21 year old have a fucking 10,000 square foot gym with hundreds of clients? She's like, Zach, you need to fucking stop looking at that shit. She's like, that is tearing you down. Dude. And I look at her, I'd be like, dude, babe, I've been in this for like seven or eight years and they've been in it for like a year and they're killing it way more than me. But like, yeah. in my mind, like I've already achieved it all. Like I'm already trying to like live as if I'm already there. Time which, just has to catch up. Yeah, and, and you know, those those things really brought me down because I'm like, am I even, what am I, like, what am I doing wrong? Like, what am I doing wrong? What are they doing right that I'm that I'm not doing? Like, yeah. so it was like, it would really fuck me up a lot. Dude, comparison's the thief of joy, bro. <laughs> yeah, like, dude, and I really tried to, like, I'm really good at it. I don't want to compare myself to anybody, and I still catch myself doing it. Yeah, dude. All I did the time. Too, I've, I've started following this guy on Instagram. Um, pretty, I can't think of his name, but he, in his, in his bio, it says, millionaire by 24. I'm just like, damn, dude, like, I'm at this point in my life where it's like, I don't, like, I don't feel negative about what he did. So now I ask myself, like, how the fuck did he do that? Like, how did he do that? I want to know what he did because it doesn't matter whether it's him or somebody else. It's like, if it can be done, then it can be done. And whether one, if one person did it, then another person can do it. And I tell myself, like, there's going to be people in their 20s and teens who are going to be probably more successful than me sooner in life like there will be like there's going to be people who are born let's say somebody's born today by the time they're 20 somebody who's born today is going to be a fucking millionaire of course it's going to whether happen. that's going to be old not old money or new money <laughs> like yeah well let's just say like they they work their asses they off they work and, their ass yeah. off they create a business they figure out their lane and they make it happen so it's like it can always be done it's never too late it doesn't matter how old you are it doesn't matter how young you are like the process is the process and if you do the work it can you know what i mean for some people it takes longer for you know but it's like it can be done you know what i mean so it's just like finding that switch which obviously i feel like you have it's just it's a hard one to get to though where it's like man how the fuck are they doing it and then you start getting kind of resentful to like well how the fuck do they do it and you start getting inspired and like inspired by it instead for sure because i like like i said i'm not going to sell out i'm still going to try to you know 
be the best trainer. I can be, be the best business owner. I can be, be the best person I could be to everyone else. Yeah. So obviously, hopefully it just continues to grow, but it's like, man, that's amazing. Like, yeah, it's so fucking cool. Yeah. But the I, flip side is how much of that is real that you're seeing on social. Dude, people exactly. Make, people it, make things look so yeah. nice on social. That's, that's exactly people what People will talk says. about how happy they are. And then you find out like they're not happy or they're having <laughs> yeah. troubles and different things. I'm just like, we just create these stories in our head for sure for what we believe for when, sure dude the the biggest blessing that I've, I've 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 gained through this podcast is you know so many people are like willing to give me an hour plus of their time just to sit there and have a conversation some very successful people you know what yeah I'm saying? Dude, like you've been like some, peop- some awesome people you've podcasted dude, some people like i, I follow the millionaire guy that you podcasted oh, oh yeah sean sean thomas yes yes yeah. so like there's people like i probably couldn't afford an hour of their time Right. But then dude, I meet people. I'm just like, even those people, I'm just like, oh, you're just a guy. You're just a fucking guy. Like you're not any more special than anybody else. Like the things that you're doing isn't any, like you walk into their space and it's just like, oh, it's just a nice little like the on it gym, for example. Like, have you been down there in Austin? I've seen many pictures. You've, of you've what seen it the looks pictures, like. right? Yeah. You've seen videos, the black right? Black turf, the. It's yeah, everything. I know that. So, like, I've been in that building, and I know what it looks like. And even before they expanded to that room with the black turf, like, just the main gym area, like, in your mind, if you're only seeing it, it's like you start creating the story in your head of, like, what it probably looks like or, you know what I mean? Like, but then you get there in the physical space, and it's like, oh, well, it's a gym, just like any other gym, really. Like, cool. Like, they're doing really good marketing, but – you go to Austin, Texas, even it's like there's a lot of people in Austin who have no idea what on it is. You know what I mean? Like, so they're not even the biggest in their own city type shit. So it's like, man. But their social media forum makes it seem like they're e- like exactly some crazy, dude. crazy big ass. Yeah, and they're crushing it. Don't get For me wrong. Sure. Like from a business perspective, For like sure. they're doing some cool ass shit. But it's just like it's just so easy to tell ourselves stories. Yeah. of how awesome it is for somebody else or another business and like how shitty our thing is but at the end of the day dude we're all just fucking out here just trying to make it happen and nobody really knows what the fuck they're doing like some people sure. act like they have the answer but they don't they're just doing we're all just fucking doing man it's just the people who keep doing are the ones who win for sure i feel like i learned over the last year trying to open this place up i learned more about business in the last year than i have in like the last five or six years just by doing it just literally by experiencing it and andy frisella says it the best he's like you can read Read all the books you want. You can listen to all the podcasts you want. But until you go out and fucking take a little bit of action, you're not even going to know what type of failures you're going to endure and what type of success you're going to endure without actually going to just do it. So he's like, don't read anything. Just go fucking do it. Yeah. Just just go do it a little bit and then start reading and start shaping your mind and the things that you want to grow into, you know? Yeah. I think that is like one of the biggest things that I've learned is just like – just doing it, you know, just go and do it. And I know being in like a municipality, I know that I have to go out into the community to let people know where I'm at because they don't know I'm here. And I'm a St. Anne native. I was born and raised in St. Anne. I've lived here my whole entire life. And it's one of the main reasons I moved back here. I have two kids now, two girls, one seven months and one's almost two and a half. So I wanted to be closer to my family. And St. Charles is saturated with gyms everywhere. So in my mind, I had already told myself that I wouldn't be successful in St. Charles doing the type of training that I do because there's a lot of people out there that are really good that do exactly what I do. And there's awesome gyms everywhere out there. You can't even travel two miles without running into a gym out there. Crazy it's gyms. crazy. And there's still gyms opening up out there still. And I'm just like, that's nuts. I hope they're very successful. I think it's going to be very hard. But I was like, I found this place. I looked in it. It looked disgusting. There's no wall over there. Mold over. I'm like, dude, this is a gold mine. Yeah, you this, saw it. This is a gold mine. Diamond like, this, in the rough. Yeah, this is like, this is a space. You know, I was like, how long has this been available? He's like, three years. I'm like, dude, I was on Google trying to find the building and like the different three, 360 image is different than what this place is. And I'm like, dude, I just got in my car and came here. I looked right through that glass window and there was like a big old sign that said for lease there and there's like dirt and webs and just everywhere. I was like, oh shit, this is awesome. This is so perfect. This is the best. (laughs) (laughs) Seriously, that's exactly what I thought, dude. Fuck yeah. And I ended up calling the guy and uh, I had like a conversation with my wife and she's like, are you sure you want to open a business in St. Anne? You know, the medium income and blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, yeah. And I'm like, you know, I talked to my brother. He's a chiropractor. He's like, dude, Zach, they're not fucking coming there because the gym's in St. Anne. They're coming to see you. You. Like, they're they're there to see you and to train because you're there teaching them. It doesn't matter where you're at yeah. at all. So now I have people coming from South County. I have people coming from Fenton. I have people coming from uh, Illinois coming nice. here. Like, 30-minute drives are coming here once For a week you. To, tra- to train because they like the way that I train. And I'm super humbled that they want to do that. 
So I actually canceled the meeting that I was supposed to come see here for the first time with the broker. I had called him like two days before. I was like, hey, man, I got to cancel my appointment on Friday because I was just like, do I want to open a business in San Ann? And I was like really hooked right next to Hobby Lobby in Bridgeton. There was a space right next to Thrive. Okay. I was like, I had the lease. I was almost ready to sign it. And I was like, I got to go look at this place in San Ann before I sign this lease in Bridgeton. Yeah. And then I was like, this is a much better choice for you. This was perfect. Yeah. It was a triple net lease. I don't know if you're familiar with a triple net lease or a triple net lease basically mm-hmm. just means you got to pay, pay for their sales tax and all that other stuff. So oh. if you have 1500 square feet, you're paying an extra $3 a square foot a year to pay for real estate taxes and shit like that really? for the, yeah. Oh, fuck so that. I was like, dude, I need to find an industrial space. I need to find a warehouse space. That's not a triple net lease. Like fuck all that. That is yeah. like a fucking jip. Yeah. See, there's so much about leases. I have no clue about. So I learned a lot about all that other stuff. I had like Sean Tierney help look over my lease a little Sean's bit. Sean's the motherfucking yeah, man. Yeah, dude. He's, he's the dude, dude. He helped me out and, um, Basically, there's things on the lease I couldn't change, but I didn't have a choice. It's like, yeah. that's another risk, you know? We had to sign a personal guarantee, me and my wife, on the lease. Oh, really? Yeah. So it's like- So no matter what, you got to pay it. Exactly. So- You can go under, you, go under, you still got to pay mm-hmm, it. Because since this is technically like my very first building that I'm opening myself as a business owner, there was no really track record of right. from the, the past. So right. It was like, well, at least, like I said, you know, your your landlord or whatever you want to call them, like, they're flexible. Right? Of course. You know, they work with you. They want you to be successful. Definitely. Which is good. So yeah, I think so. they're invested in you. Which they, is, exactly. Yeah. They believe in me. Right. They totally do. That matters. I think that is, like, one of the main reasons, another reason why I got this space, because I talked to probably three or four or five other brokers, and two of them were just, like, total yeah. douchebags. I didn't even know what to do. They were just, like, throwing me around, and I, like, couldn't even have a conversation with them and be normal people. But the guy here, he'd meet up here with me when I want to meet up. He'd sit there and talk with me. He'd answer all my questions. I don't have his personal phone number because he probably, thank God he didn't give me that. But <laughs> <laughs> he'd be like, this fucking guy. <laughs> Two o'clock in the morning, holy shit. That's he has funny. another question. So all of it, it's, it's been great, man. I love being here, and it's a huge blessing. And uh, I love being close to my family. It's a beautiful space. It's really big. Yeah. And uh, hopefully I can just continue to grow and expand. Yeah. Well, you will, man. And, uh, dude, I'm happy for you. I'm fucking I'm proud of you, like, coming from that little space in St. Charles to, like, this beautiful facility, dude. Dude, it's, but it's being in awesome. dude, being in St. Charles, I will tell you, it has, like, the, I was, well, two, April of 2015 until now. Yeah. Like, I was out there for five years. Making it happen, dude. Dude, I learned so much more about being a trainer in the five years than I ever have out there. Being out there pushed me to be try try to be the best trainer I can be and person and athlete just because I was around high level athletes all the time and like you, Sampo, Julius, just like all the people out there, oh. so motivating, no, so inspiring. You see them grind at work all day and then they're coming and training at the gym all night. Like people don't realize what fighters dude, it, do. And it go is through, man. it is gritty, man. A lot of us don't make money. We fucking work full time jobs and then we go and we train every fucking second that we can. Every second. You beat your body up like fucking crazy. Like there's so many disciplines. Like. I was talking to a guy, he just does jujitsu, uh, my buddy Mike, and uh, he's like, dude, I didn't realize, like, what you guys do to go through, because, I mean, he's, you know, he's, you know, he's your average guy, like, you know, he started coming to the gym because he signed up his son for jujitsu, and then he started helping out, and now he's doing jujitsu, which is fucking awesome, and, you know, just a lot of people don't realize how much people put into this dream of fighting it's crazy it's crazy dude it's very motivating to see it's inspiring i totally think it has like driven me to be like a way better person in general because you're just around people trying to achieve greatness everywhere you're around like you become who you surround yourself with 100 like that is it like that is it dude and i wanted to be like everyone else like when i first showed up mike's like hey this is zach uh, he's friends with Ben Roy and then Sampa goes, Oh, that fucking sucks. And I'm like, Oh God, <laughs> uh, ben. I was so, I was so embarrassed, dude. I was like my very first day there. And I was just like, Oh God, I was ben like, my heart's about to pump out of my chest. I'm like so embarrassed. I'm like this little scrawny dude. I'm, and then Julius walks in the door and he's like, Oh, Hey. And I'm like, now he's like one of my good friends and we hang outside the gym and shit. And dude, we train together guy. all the time. He's like one of the most humble, nicest people you would ever meet in your yes. whole entire life. Yes. And I think that's why we connect so well on a level. And yeah. Everyone out there has been amazing. And Mike, too, dude. I mean, that dude has done so much for me, I can't even fucking count. Well, man, just keep moving forward, brother. Um, 
let's wrap this up. It's it's eleven, and I want to be respectful of your time. Oh yeah, you're Dude, good. Time just flies, doesn't yeah, it? I was having a great time. Dude, I love it, man. I love it. Um, but yeah, man, you're you're fucking you're on the path, man. Just just keep grinding it out. Um, how can people check you out here? Like anything you want to? They can go to Facebook, type in Eyewitness Fitness Training and Wellness. They can go to Google, type in Eyewitness Fitness. They uh, they can come here, man. Yeah. Come and check it out. First class is always free. Um, I'm located in St. Anne, Missouri, right off the Rock Road. Dope. 2,400 square foot boutique gym. <laughs> yeah, man. And again, I'll put it all in the show notes so people can check you out. Yeah, I dude. appreciate it, man. Dude, Zach, thanks again, brother, for doing this. It's been a blast. Like, dude, yeah, damn, man. I always love when we just sit there and just like shoot the shit, man. This just like at St. Charles all the time. We, <laughs> we did this so many times, all dude. All the fucking time, dude. I feel like there would be times where like I'd be helping like kids class and you're about to start a class and like I would like just ignore the kids and I would come like talk to you for a <laughs> second. It's like, hey, dude, we gotta go back to teaching. <laughs> yeah, I love that. The little square in there. That's the best time, dude. A little separated. <laughs> classes but you're like hey a little fist bump how you doing hot kids class things are going good but i know those little tiny catch-up things are like the best yeah yeah dude. so good stuff but i really appreciate you uh hit me up and wanting to do the podcast i think this will be good and absolutely dude yeah this will drop pretty quickly i'll have this drop pretty soon yeah man so. and uh, let's not make it months before we see each other again i know man i just need to just, i mean you're right down the road i just need to come stop in here and just come hang come out get a some. couple workouts in dude i know dude that's what i need i'd to love do. to put you through some <laughs> if you can put me through some too because <laughs> i know you know a lot of shit that i don't too so uh, i'm sure we could have a good time dude oh sure yeah a good time so all how, right how do you feel about being a guest trainer sometime i'm with it i'm definitely with it man i fucking dude you know i still have a ton of like clubs and maces and shit totally, I, I can dude. come teach like a small class of like six or something like that oh dude my members would eat that up dude they'd yeah. love that we could do some fun stuff for sure dude so we'll talk about it for sure we'll get something going hell yeah man well thank you so I'm much for it. having me dude zach thanks brother um everybody until next time oh yeah <laughs>